Um, I guess we can start slowly. Um, again, if there are questions or concern, uh, do let me know either by uh, speaking up or by typing uh, your your points on the chat box. Uh, uh, yeah, so basically, basically our goal today is that we're going to show that the viscosity solution to the ergodic problem E is essentially same as weak cam solution to E, okay? And um, this, um, uh, this is actually a, a major milestone because uh, it tells us that no matter what uh, framework we are looking at, either in uh, the dynamic of system framework or in the PD framework, they are the same. Uh, I'll tell you just a tiny bit different between between the two points. Um, okay, so last time we already defined viscosity solution. I recall the definition of the viscosity solution here for the for the time dependent problem, the Hamilton Jacobi equation here. Uh, that we can touch it from above and below and you know in mathematical language we can say that it has strict max or mean points uh, with with respect to the difference with the test functions and uh and let's focus more today on the on the ergodic problem so I'll, I'll just write out a definition for the ergodic problem uh, so the ergodic problem of concerns is uh or the cell problem is this problem that we have been talking about for quite a long time, and it's actually the 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 central object right of the theory uh, for some constant c not in R. Uh, this is in the torus, and you can surely remember that this is sort of a fixed energy level, right? Because we have conservation of energy. And uh, uh, viscosity definition, uh, uh, viscosity solutions for E definition is that you take uh, V is a given function, V is continuous function, right? Um, so I don't even need it to be Lipschitz, but I mean, a priori estimates kick in to tell us that it's Lipschitz, uh, but, 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 but V is not smooth, not C1 in general. You have seen an example uh, or two we did earlier for weak cam solutions that are only Lipschitz but not C1. So you can uh, you can use a smooth test function to touch it from above or below. You can imagine that you can take this function phi, right? Uh, phi tilde that maybe is not yet touching uh, V from above, then you can just lowering it down, right? I mean, just lowering it down until it touches the graph. Say this is phi. So if phi touches, um, say uh, the subsolution test, saying that uh, if phi smooth and phi uh, touches uh, v from above. At x naught, if this were the case, if the it touches at x naught, then I would have that um, uh, the sub solution, so the less than equals to inequality, h of x, d phi of x naught is less than equal to c naught. Okay, so that's a sub solution test, and uh, similarly, I would have the super solution test. that if uh, C is smooth and uh, C touches uh, V from below at X naught, then I would have the other, the other side, the inequality. And basically what I'm saying here is that if the function V is differentiable at a point, then you can combine the two inequality to have that you have equality there. And, and the remark we made last time was that, um, um, you know, like uh, viscosity solution puts additional requirements on the non-differentiable points that you have to test more at those points, right? Okay, 
So that's sort of uh, that's sort of the the the, the game. Yeah, maybe let me draw a picture. In this case, is uh, yeah, this is fine. This is u of v. And this v here, and then you touch it from below by a function c. This point x naught. If you touch it from below at c, then you have the other side of inequality. And again, remember that you can combine the two inequalities to make that. You have equalities at a differentiable point. So again, there are certain technicalities uh, I'm skipping here, but but what I said is correct. Um, yeah, maybe let me make a remark. So remark is that uh, V is a viscosity solution. Viscosity solution to E and V is uh, differentiable at uh, Y in the torus. This is gonna imply that I have equality at that point, okay? So then if that is the case, then I would have H of Y dVy equals to C not there. Okay? But of course, I mean, um, at non-differentiable points and I have to be careful. Right. Um, uh, any questions for me up to this point? Any concerns about, about the definitions of, of, of viscosity solution to E? Okay, great. Um, so now, <clears throat> Let me do optimal control formula. I'm gonna essentially skip the proof of this one. I'm just gonna tell you the optimal control uh, um, representation formula. Control uh, ref formula for the Cauchy problem, okay? So I put the same set of assumptions that we have been, we have been doing all the times for, um, uh, for, you know, we have been doing all the times for, for, for the Wickham theory. So same set of assumptions, H is uh, smooth enough, um, um, uh, super linear and uniform, locally uniformly convex. And then we consider the equation, uh, hamilton jacob equation of time dependent case, right? So UT plus H of x du equals to zero in the torus cross zero infinity. Everything is periodic here. U x zero equals to g of x on tn. Um, very soon next week, I mean, probably we're gonna end uh, or I don't know, I'll, I'll have to check it out. Um, our, our class by proving a, a large time behavior result for this equation, which is, which is really important. Um, uh, but you know we have to do certain preparation for that. So initial data, g is given, so a continuous function, okay. And or you can assume that it's smoother, Lipschitz or C two, depending on situations. Um, that's fine. So <clears throat> this theorem is very important because it's exactly uh, one of the thing that connects the dot between between. Um, PD and dynamics, right? And it's through optimal control formulations. And it says that uh, uh, you, okay, um, let you be the viscosity solution uh, to, to the hamilton jacob equation. Then you has exactly this satisfying this optimal control formula uh, that we have been talking about uh, quite a few times already, but uh, I'm not giving you a proof. So I have the running cost L of gamma, gamma S, gamma dot of S, DS. And then I have the terminal cost. And, you know, like the question that 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 uh, the son asked last time, you know, sometimes that in optimal control, they say terminal cost, and that's why they reverse the time. I mean, here it's weird, right? Because you are running from positive time back to zero. So it's not really terminal cost, but you know, uh, for gamma absolutely continuous uh, 
and gamma t equals to x. Okay. So again, the, the interpretation is what I, 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 I drew on the left panel. You start at the point x t, you can go back in various different parts. You know, you can go back in whatever parts you like. Um, and each of the part you pay uh, essentially, um, you know, this is the so-called running cost, right? And then, and then when you reach the destination, uh, gamma zero at, 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 at zero, when you reach gamma zero, you could pay um, the terminal cost. Uh, G of gamma zero, I mean, like, uh, you know, depending on different locations, the cost you would pay is different, okay? So, so that's a beautiful, uh, perfect optimal control formula. And it turns out that, it turns out that the viscosity solution is exactly, is exactly uh, solving, uh, Beautifully solving this this optimal control um, problem. Okay, uh, so I'm not giving you a proof uh, here. Uh, of course, I mean ideally I should give you a proof, but um, uh, yeah. So maybe uh, uh, so for details. See uh, chapter two my book, uh, I have uh, the key details there. Um, but maybe let me give you a, 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 an idea so that you see that, uh, um, how to put it, so that you see that it's, it's, it's there. Uh, you know, actually it's already, it's already um, hidden in, in all the steps that we have done, okay? So, I mean, it's, it's not some, some uh, something strange, some foreign ob objects to us. Uh, I'll give you a sort of sketch of proof, and you can, you can, uh, uh, how, you can perfect it easily. Okay. Um, but before that, uh, uh, let me state this corollary, which is kind of obvious because uh, this is actually double minimizing problem, right? So uh, this is sort of like a, a double minimization problem. And this works only for first order equation, second order equation, uh, having this kind of formula is very hard. I mean, recently we do have a, a sort of a new uh, representation formula for second order equations. Um, actually, I'm giving a talk on this uh, this week and next week. But, uh, but, but, uh, but for first order equation, what is really interesting is that we have a DAPO minimization problem. What do I mean by that? So actually you are doing uh, minimizations over all parts, gamma t equals to x. Uh, okay, and then you take first, you, know, you have the other minimization problem, right? So you can say minimizations of the action functional and say you have gamma zero is equal to some, some value y, okay? And then you plus um, g of y, right? Because gamma zero is y, okay? And then it's a, it's a double minimization problem. And remember that mean mean is just mean. So that's why we can squeeze it in. And, and you realize that this object inside here is nothing but it's just ht of yx, just the cost going from y to x with, with, with time t, right? So that can be rewritten as uh, just ht of yx plus g of y, right? And then, and then you realize that what you only need to minimize now is just that you minimize over y in the torus of this value. Okay, so you would have your x to equal to that. Okay, that's that's really beautiful, and okay, it's a, it's a structure of double minimization problem. So you see that uh, a PD is 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 harder than um, uh, it's harder than just calculus of variation, right? Calculus of variation is that you are given two 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 points, and you are finding you are finding the 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 um, 
the minimum cost going from that point to the other. But PD is sort of you have a, a, a double minimizing effects and then it's quite nonlinear because not just that you have to minimize the actions, but you have also to minimize it with respects to the to the uh, to the additional term of, of, of initial data. Okay. And then you have to minimize over all such uh, available positions. Why? Okay. Any question for me up to this point? Okay, great. So as I promised, let me give you a sketch of a, um, a very quick, uh, just a, a quick uh, idea on how to prove that U is a viscosity solution to the hamilton jacob equation. Uh, let me copy the formula up here. Oh, well, fine, let's just copy it. Um, yeah, maybe this formula is good. Um, yeah, maybe also the picture. Yeah, I don't know of a better way to do copy and paste. If you guys know, let me know. I mean, I'm trying to um, optimize my, uh, my skills, you know, I think that this kind of skill is important, but somehow I'm still uh, Okay, so this is the problem. And then uh, remember that we have proved the so-called dynamic programming principle. So the, the key point is, is the diagram is the following going in this way. So we're going to use, um, so we're going to use optimal control formula. To get DPP, so dynamic programming principle and from DPP, we're gonna get that uh, the U is a viscosity solution. So it, it's going exactly in this kind of order. And um, it's by no mean that is surprising that, you know, now that instead of going all the way from time t to time uh, zero you can just stop at some you know just go back a little bit to time say t minus h okay and then you realize that everything has to be optimal right and then uh and then we would have the formula that u x t gonna equals to infimum of just the cost functions going just from t minus h to t say with gamma t equals to x of the action l of gamma gamma dot ds plus u of uh, gamma t minus h t minus h so this is exactly our dpp dynamic programming principle okay and again i mean this is uh this is this is sort of clear right because uh we have proved all those kind of things we have proved the dynamic programming principle, and also we have uh, uh, we also have proved that. Uh, so this is also related to um, related to the formula that we have proved that the formula. Maybe not this. Related to the formula that we have proved for the h function, that is h t of. Uh, uh, y to x is equals to infimum of all z so that we go from y to z first. Uh, let's see. In the time, uh, I'm sorry, I'm using h again here. Um, fine, I'm just going to use it now. So forgive me about the double h, but uh, y to z and then going from h to h, z to x. So this is exactly that formula we have proved, okay? So I'm now gonna use the dynamic programming principle here uh, to, to, you know, essentially, I have two terms on the right, to essentially pass the limit, okay? So if you are curious, you can, you can uh, so this is just a heuristic proof.
of one-sided inequality, but 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 you can you can do the proof. Uh, uh, you you can do the proof by yourself because because uh, uh, everything is quite clear here. You know, uh, I am going to assume that U is C one. If U is not C one, then you just um, um, then you just uh, replace it by smooth test functions by using exactly the definition of viscosity solution. So let me do this one quick. Assuming that U is C1. So I would say that for, for all gamma that is a C1 part, I should have that UXT is less than equals to the action, right? Okay, and then uh, and then I would just you know use uh, exactly the the mean value theorem, or I mean I'm just gonna take uh, one over h, taking the limit at h goes to zero of the difference, right? It should be taking u x t minus u of gamma t minus h, t minus h on this side, and less than equals to limit as h goes to zero plus of one over h, the average of the integral. You see, it, it, it's very natural and simple. I mean, we have used the fundamental theorem of calculus and whatever, or the mean value theorem, or whatever, you know, many, many times. So the left-hand side, when you take h goes to zero, this would just by the chain rule, it would give me just u t of x t. Uh, plus du of xt dot with gamma dot ft, right? Less than equals to the, the, the limit, it's just gonna be L of uh, gamma t is x, so it's x and gamma dot of t is gamma dot of t, right? So it's less than equals to that. And remember the gamma dot of t is freely chosen. Right, because you know uh, your part is here. This is x t. I take any part going back, right? I mean any part. So gamma dot is freely chosen, um, and that means that we would have u t x t plus d u x t dot with v. So let's say that gamma dot is v minus l of x v is less than equals to zero for all v, and you take supremum over V here. Yeah, it's again the duality, right? You know, it's it's the dual thing that comes into the game all the times. And this would allow us to conclude that exactly that we have U T X T plus H of X D U X T is less than equal to zero. And we are done. Okay. That's it. Uh, so this is a sub solution property for the super solution property. Of course, you do it differently. You would select the optimal part and stuff like that. But I mean, I, I'm, you know, uh, we have the theory. You're going to see that. So how to turn the heuristic proof into regress proof? You know, in the regress proof, I mean, essentially, I. Uh, I, I only have that U is Lipschitz, right, or, or continuous, uh, but I can I can use this. Uh, so this could be U, right, and then I have to touch it from above by a, uh, by a smooth test function V at x t. Okay, so in the regress proof, actually everything uh, er everything is already here. What you would do is that you would realize that U x t here. It's exactly equals to phi x t, okay? And then you would realize the other term is that u uh, here, u of gamma t minus h, t minus h here, is gonna be exactly based on the graph, right? Phi touches u from above. That means that this one is uh, less than equals to phi. So you see, so you then in the rigorous proof, you would just replace u by phi. Okay, u by phi, u by phi, phi, see? 
So eventually you have right away that pt xt plus h of x dv xt less than equals to zero. Actually, I just told you the whole proof. So, you know, it's, uh, it's remarkable. The testing mechanism, it just, you know, already, already sort of like um, plucked into the problem. Yeah, so, um, so we are done. Um, questions or concerns about this? Okay, great. Again, I mean, this, this proof, uh, the proof I just presented to you is very natural. Uh, and sometimes, you know, if you get luck, right, you're in the frontier of certain research directions, you search a route and you can find various uh, amazing things that you know, the proofs are actually not complicated, but you you, you got to know the frameworks and, and do things. Okay, so now we are ready to uh, to go next to the proof of the existence of minimizer. So meaning that uh, meaning that the, the problem is this, right? You know, the optimal control problem is that we start from XT and we go back and we claim that there is exactly a part gamma. This is a minimizer. So that we have uh, uxt equals to uh, to the action on gamma. Okay. So so there exists a minimizer. Right. So that that's sort of what we claim. And the proof is actually not complicated. It's already based upon everything we have done, and and it just comes naturally, right? You have you have the minimization problem again. This was the double minimizing problem, but I rewrote it just at one minimizing problem. And then you know the map is continuous, right? Remember that we have proved that H T is Lipschitz for any fixed T. So uh, it's just summation of two continuous functions. So there, there exists a point Z in which you have equality, right? And Z of Z is just fixed there. And after you have equality that, then you just see that uh, the, the, the minimization problem now is just for HT of ZX. And that one is just already based upon the first 10 lectures we have done. So we have the existence of minimizer of gamma in CK. So we are done. We have a CK curve with gamma t equals to x so that we have this equality. Okay. Uh, this, is, this is remarkable because we even only assume g is only a continuous function, right? Not, not even c1, but still we have existence of a minimizer. And moreover, we have that gamma satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equation. So this is this. Okay. Right. So great. Questions, concerns. All right. So I have one more important theorem for you guys. I didn't. I didn't write down in in the in the in the lecture because uh, because I just want to do it now. It, it just actually right away from the result. But what is really remarkable is that this theorem is often not being written down. Um, I mean, it's, it's known to experts, but, but, but sometimes it's quite, it's quite, um, it seems like some, something, um, how to put it, it's, it seems like it's something uh, very mysterious, but I mean, it's already also in what we have done, okay? So, so the theorem is, is the following. So take gamma as the above minimizer. So I take the minimizer, uh, minimizing part, right? The gamma. And now I realize that our function is differentiable along it at any point gamma SS here, okay? 
we have done that, right? I mean, remember that if we said that if we have room from gamma to go back and forth, then the function is differentiable there, okay? So this is a result that not many people knew, but I mean, of course, the experts who have been working in both know it. Um, yeah, sometimes it's not written down, uh, uh, written down. Uh, but I mean, we, we wrote it down in, 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 in our course, right? If you have a minimizers, you can uh, minimizing part at a point, if you can go back and forth, then that is the point of differentiability. So that means that then for any S strictly in the between of zero T, so it, it might not equal to zero because G might be not differentiable there, right? Uh, and also it might not be equals, uh, be equals to the ending point. Then for any S between zero and T, we have U is differentiable. at the point gamma SS. And moreover, we have that uh, du of gamma SS equals to dvl of gamma S gamma dot S. Okay, so that's remarkable. So this is essentially telling me that I have differentiability along the backward characteristics or forward characteristic, right? Oh, this is actually backward, right? I start at this point, I said that I can find a, a minimizing part going back. So that's exactly the backward characteristics. And U is differentiable along the backward characteristics, except possibly at the two endpoints, right? Okay. Questions, concerns? Okay. Again, okay. this, this, this. Uh, when we go back, it's a backward characteristic, but, but, but if we go from gamma zero, zero forward, it's a forward characteristic. And this forward characteristic is exactly the forward characteristics in characteristic method. So, you know, it connects the dot to everything, you know, everything is on the same page. Okay. Yeah, so another remark before we, we move to the main point, again, too many interesting points, but okay, so you might not be, uh, yeah, maybe it's better to move this one up. Uh, let's see. Uh, so you might not be um, differentiable at the last point, at the end point gamma t, t, which is x, t, okay? This is a scenario in which that is not differentiable. This is x, t. The scenario is simple. When you have, from here, you have two minimizers. You have this minimizer going back, right? Because you see that my, my minimizing problem, I just said that there, there is a minimizer, gamma, right? Because, because I, I minimize first over y in the torus. There can be different minimizers, right? So there could be gamma one, which is a minimizer, and there could be another gamma two. So both of gamma one and gamma two are minimizers. Okay, and in this in this case, you see that if you go back along characteristics, your part is differentiable. However. If you go forward, this is exactly the scenario in which you have collisions of characteristics, right? The characteristics are running into each other. Um, so in this case, you might not be differentiable, right? Because, because it can have two different um, uh, super gradient in this case. Again, you, you're gonna be semi-concave. So it can have two different super gradients, uh, okay? So you, you, you might not be, be differential at this point because you might have the DVL of gamma one T, gamma one dot of T is different from DVL of gamma two T, gamma two dot of T, okay? And, and, and which is sort of clear, right? Because, because this is, um, yeah, maybe it's a better way to write this one down is, uh, um, the point is just x, right? Uh, uh, 
just x x we know that dv is is a is a is a uh, diffeomorphism right x is the same point so if uh, if if the gamma dot the diff the velocities are different then clearly that that the, the 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 dv are different so that means that u is not differentiable okay questions concerns all right so now we are at the uh, the end uh, we now going to prove the main results uh, that um, if v is the viscosity solution to the ergodic problem this ergodic problem, then V is also a weak KM solution. The other direction is, is already uh, done, right? So, um, so um, the other direction is that if V is a weak KM solution, then V is a viscosity solution to E. This is already done because uh, because remember that we proved that if V is, is, is a weak cam solution, then you, we would have that, um, then this would imply that, uh, what, what was that? The semi-group, I forgot how did I call it? ST, uh, S. yeah, maybe ST minus or something of, of V plus uh, C naught of T. Uh, what the sorry, um, yes, okay, now I remember. So, st of v would equal to v plus c naught of t, right? So, that that what we prove, and this actually means that you know, st is the semi group property is exactly is exactly the 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 um, the, the optimal control formula here, right. Uh, this is this is nothing but ut is nothing but st of 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 g x right that's exactly the semi group so uh, so what i said that it, this was already done because the semi group st acting on v is v plus c not of t and this means that um, v plus c not of t solves the pde uh, ut plus h of x the u equals to zero in the in the viscosity sense, right? Viscosity sense, okay. Uh, maybe u equals to that solves the PD, and u equals to that solves the PD. Then you just plug in, right? This is equivalent to u t is just c naught. Uh, yeah, maybe I I should have the minus size here. Sorry. Minus, minus. So I would have ut is minus c naught because that's that exactly the formula of u, right? U is this this one. This is st of v. Okay. And uh, and h of x du is nothing but h of x dv, right? Because when you differentiate in x, there's only v. So that's exactly that's exactly the the ergodic problem. Right. So that means that if you have a weak cam solution, then you already have a, um, that is a solution to the ergodic problem. Now we have to, we're gonna prove the other way. And this point is the point that in the literature, uh, sometimes that uh, people said that, you know, in the PD uh, setting, they have the, the ergodic, the, the viscosity solutions, but they didn't have the, the calibrated curves right because if you want to prove that that you assume that v is a viscosity solution then you would need to prove that for any point there is a calibrated curves the backward characteristics that that satisfying uh, the box right this often the case exactly the backward characteristics and 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 people in dynamical systems sometimes say that this this was not done by the pd community uh, my point is that it's already hidden there. I mean, um, so the, the 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 great and unpublished paper and of Leon's Papa Nicolau and Varadan, they have already studied the the ergodic problem E, but they only studied in the PD uh, viewpoint, and it's, it's true that they haven't 
uh, they didn't discuss about calibrated curves at that point. Um, uh, however, if we combine the tools and we see that everything is consistent, everything is the same. And now it's exactly that I'm doing that for the last uh, last few minutes and then we are done. Okay. So the, 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 the idea is, is, is now that we just need to design a calibrated curve, right? And then you see that I'm gonna do it uh, iteratively. Um, what I'm doing is that again, exactly the point let u x t equals to v x minus c naught of t. Okay, and this is exactly a separable solution to our PDE, right? So it's solving this equation. I'm just introducing the time to the problem, right? So I start with uh, start with stationary problem. That is the algorithmic problem h of x dv equals to c naught, right? And then we're gonna we're gonna um, introduce time to the problem. Now we're gonna consider, consider a separable solution. This is additive separable, not multiplicative, right? Uh, Vx minus C naught of T. And this is the solution to our PDE now, right? To our uh, time dependent PDE, right? Utxt plus H of X, du equals to zero and u x zero equals to v of x, okay? And now, now we're gonna just construct our calibrated curves, you know, uh, iteratively, and you can see it clearly. I'm just gonna do it for, uh, you know, so, so we're gonna construct a calibrated curve, curves uh, iteratively. for each of the interval, let's say from minus k to minus k plus one for k in n, right? And once we have constructed that, we can just, just glue everything together. Glue everything together to get what we need, right? And then, and then we are done, okay? And then you can see that clearly I fix, um, eta one equals to x, so from x one here, which this is x, x one, I can go back in one unit time. Then there is a, there is a, a CK minimizer so that I can go back, right? And remember that I realized that, um, you know, I can just repeat the, the process, right? Now I start from this point, I can like, uh, you know, go down for one more unit time and then starting from this point, I can also go down for one more unit time and just keep going down. Um, you know, exactly that, uh, keep going down. Then I have constructed the whole uh, backward characteristic or, or calibrated curve. Then I'm done, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Of course, for the details, you can see it. Uh, we have done this process also once earlier in a similar manner. But here you see that uh, what is really amazing is that we started with viscosity solution, and then and then we use optimal control, and from that we can we can construct the backward characteristic. Um, so I, I I don't think that this way of constructing backward characteristic, although it's simple, it's known to expert, it has been written anywhere in 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 the literature. Um, so I, I wrote this one down in the book. Um, in my book just to just to show you that everything is consistent i'm not saying this is new and this is just there right uh but now you see that the the frameworks from dynamics we started from lagrangian hamiltonian system and then goes to optimal control and goes to pd and then everything fits together um and this is typically the case for important uh important uh mathematical problems, right? One of the problem has so many different uh, ways to look at and many different interpretations. And, uh, and, and what, in my opinion, what is uh, important is that uh, typically um, you learn it. Uh, I mean, it's impossible to learn everything. Uh, and then, and then do, do research is gonna take you years, but you learn it and you attack it from a different angle. 
and then and then you broaden your knowledge you know you're gonna grasp all the different viewpoints uh, slowly and 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 uh um, but 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 I mean but 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 uh, um, in a very uh, stable and 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 uh, thorough manner, and eventually you grasp everything together and bring everything to a a a a a um, uh, sort of transparent platform, and everything connects. Yeah, I think that that's it for today. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm also um, being a little bit sketchy in the last group, but I mean, it's, it's there. Questions, concerns? Okay. Yeah, again, I mean, my, my, my point is that you see that everything is quite interesting, especially even just 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 uh, uh, the the simple points about differentiability along backward characteristics and and when you have characteristics run into each other you have that is um, not differentiable those are remarkable you know it's 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 just so that it connects back to um, you know it connects back to exactly what we have what we have learned earlier uh, you yeah. uh, so um, I'm, I'm I'm quite happy that that, that those are um, those are clear and transparent for you now, um, and and um, but 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 in reality there are a lot of problems, including um, one of the problem or um, few of the problems I have been working on that uh, understanding when the Characteristic crossing each other is very hard. It's it's not like um, that easy. Here we are just saying that yeah, I mean when they cross, they are not different. Uh, U is not differentiable there, but in reality, in, in many uh, real life model or I, know, I take it back, in many interesting PDEs, a specific form of, of the Hamiltonian um, that it's not possible to identify easily what are the points that characteristic cross or can you prove that in certain scenario they don't cross at all that's that's not easy okay great so uh, no other questions and thank you all and then we end the lecture today so i have decided that we're gonna uh, have our lectures uh, this is tech lecture what this is lecture 37 i think that we're gonna go up to lecture 40 uh right uh yeah um and then and then uh and then we are done so for friday of next week i'm not gonna give a lecture so you guys can review and if you have questions you can ask me by emails or something and uh and you can spend that time to just do the evaluation form it takes five minutes or so to do it for me and then and then we are good to go. I uh, remember that I posted the second homework problem, just two problem. And again, I only require you guys to do that. I'm having a look and uh, I did have a look into your first uh, homework problem set. And I'm very pleased that you guys did really thoroughly and well, and you did put a lot of time for it. And I really appreciate that. Again, given this sort of also not, not easy time. So that's great and, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, okay, so thank you all. And again, stay safe and healthy. Um, semester is nearly over. If you are uh, TAing for other classes, then uh, try to finish it up nicely. And then, um, and then you have a good summer to do research and to do other stuff. Okay, bye. Thank you.